Okay, so we've talked about you know operations with numbers. We talked a little bit last class about vectors and combining those counts, the values of the numbers. <coughs> We saw that if we had 6 plus 2, we could be looking at a number line. And the vectors for those numbers are just arrows that start at 0 and go to that value. So the vector for 6 looks like that. Vector for 2 looks like that. And the, the operation of addition, when we combine counts with addition, is telling us just to put those vectors together. So 6 plus 2 is 8, because those two vectors together have a length of 8. We saw 6 plus a negative 3. Well, the vector for negative 3 looks like that. So if we add or combine those vectors, so there's 6, negative 3, we end up being at positive 3 there. 6 plus negative 3 equals 3, because that's where the vectors end up. Now, I don't expect you to draw out vectors when you add numbers. But I keep that picture in the back of my head. If I am adding negative 239 plus 172, what I am thinking is this. Here's zero. Negative 239 goes that direction. Negative direction. 172 is positive, so it goes the opposite direction. Is it longer or shorter? It's shorter, right? 239 is bigger than 172. So that means it stops before it gets back to zero. So what this picture is telling me is two things. First of all, my answer is negative. Second of all, since the vectors point in opposite directions, the value, the magnitude of that result is the difference in their lengths. Something that comes up is a term called absolute value. Absolute value is saying what is the length of this vector. The magnitude is the technical term. So I said, what's the absolute value of negative 3? That would just be... 3, because that vector for negative 3 was 3 units long. It doesn't matter what direction it points. So the same thing down here. Each of those vectors has a magnitude or an absolute value. The 239 and the 172. The result is the difference in those magnitudes, the difference in those absolute values. 239 minus 172 we got 7, we're going to borrow here, make that 13, minus 7 is 6, that's 67. So we already said it's a negative 67. <clears throat> we might have a negative 53 plus a negative 39. Now, again, I'm not going to draw out a number line, but the picture that I am imagining looks something like this. Here's zero. Negative 53 goes that direction. It's the negative direction. Negative 39 goes in the same direction. So, again, that's telling me two things. The first thing it tells me is my answer is negative because we're on the negative side of zero. What does it tell me to do with the magnitudes? They're going in the same direction, so we're just going to add them together. 3 plus 9 is 12, so 2 carry the 1. 
1, 5, and 3 is 9. So it's a negative 92. Since the vectors pointed the same direction, we just add the magnitudes. When the vectors pointed in different directions, we subtracted the magnitudes. The picture told us whether the result was positive or negative. <clears throat> we might have negative 37 plus 84. So here's zero, negative 37 goes in the negative direction. Does 84 go in the same direction or the opposite direction? Opposite, is it longer or shorter? Longer, so it goes past zero, going into the positive. So that's telling us that result is positive. Do we add the magnitudes or subtract the magnitudes? They're different directions, right? So this result is the difference in their magnitudes, the difference in their size. So 84 minus 37. So we borrowed from the 8 to make that a 14. 14 minus 7 is 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. So that's on the positive side. It was a positive 47. Negatives, integers are one of the largest sources of mistakes throughout the semester. In, in any college algebra, intermediate algebra course that I teach, um, it, it seems to just jump up and bite you repeatedly. So make sure you work with those integers and become comfortable with them. Whether it's the picture, the number line picture that I showed you here, or if it's another way of working with them that you've developed that helps you understand them, um, make sure you've got a firm grasp on them. <clears throat> More confusing still with the integers is subtraction. Let's say I just have 8 minus 3. So 8, of course, there's our vector. There, there's our vector for 8. If I were to draw a picture of 8 minus 3, it'd probably draw it something like this. You go 8, then back 3 puts us at 5. We all know that 8 minus 3 is 5, so we didn't really need the vectors there. But if I'm looking at this picture here, that picture looks an awful lot like the picture I would draw for 8 plus a negative 3, doesn't it? So the vector for negative 3 is just that vector. In fact, they are the same picture, the exact same diagram. Because 8 minus 3, 8 subtract 3, and 8 plus a negative 3 mean the same thing. The definition of this subtraction symbol is add the opposite. Any operation, in this case the subtraction, operates on the number that comes after it. Up here, when we were adding, it was plus the 2. It told us to take that vector for 2 and move it to the end of the 6. That operation operates on the number coming after it. Well, the same here. That subtraction operates on the number coming after it. So subtracting 3 is telling us add the opposite of 3. So we added the opposite of 3 is negative 3. Now when we have... 8 minus 3, we all know how to do that. So I wouldn't expect you to change that. But where it gets confusing is if we have negative 12 minus 17. That's a bit confusing. But if we change it, <clears throat> remember the first number <clears throat> is not affected by our operation. The subtraction <coughs> excuse me, works on the number that comes after it. 
So we change this to plus the opposite of 17. What is the opposite of 17? Negative 17. <clears throat> so this is now negative 12 plus negative 17. It's addition, which means I can draw out my little vectors. Negative 12 goes that way. Negative 17 goes the same direction. So this tells us that our answer is negative. And since they go the same direction, we just add the values. 12 and 17 is 29. That's a negative 29. So negative 12 minus 17 is a negative 29. Yeah. That's my next example, exactly. If you have 19 minus a negative 8. Now, again, the 19 doesn't change. The subtraction works on the number that comes after it. So we change that to add the opposite. What's the opposite of negative 8? Positive 8. So 19 minus a negative 8 is 19 plus 8. We don't need to do the vectors for that. That's just 27. Or we might have negative 235 minus a negative 426. The negative 235 doesn't change. This, though, becomes plus. The opposite of negative 426 is 426. So I've got 0. Negative 235 goes the negative direction. 426 goes the opposite direction, longer or shorter. It's 426, does it go past zero or does it stop before zero? It goes past. 426 is, is longer, longer vector than 235. So that's telling us that our result is positive. Since the arrows go the opposite direction, it's the difference between the values. So the bigger absolute value is 426. Subtract the smaller absolute value of 235. That's 1. We borrow from the 4. That's 3 and 12. That's 9. 191. So that's a positive 191. <clears throat> Any questions? <coughs> Subtracting with the integer, subtracting with the negatives, is one of the more difficult tasks we deal with. It's one of the more easily confused tasks. When you first see it, it, it might make sense and be easy to do, but we run into it a lot down the road. And it's, it's, it's very important that you remember how to deal with the subtracting and stuff with negatives. So let's look at multiplication. We saw, back in the first day, 5 times 3, the literal definition of that is repeated addition, 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is 15. So based on that definition, it's pretty simple to imagine negative 5 times 3. That's just negative 5 plus negative 5 plus negative 5, which would be negative 15. A little more difficult to work with is 5 times negative 3. I can't take 5 and add it together negative 3 times. But we talked about that commutative property yesterday. When we're multiplying numbers, I can switch their order and it doesn't matter. So instead of 5 times negative 3, I can think of that as negative 3 times 5. So that would be negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 
plus negative 3 plus negative 3, which will give us negative 15. Good. The last step, negative 5 times negative 3, according to our definition of multiplication up here, that one makes no sense at all. I can't take negative 5 and add it together in negative 3 times. Even if I switch them. I can't take negative 3 and add it together in negative 5 times. Our definition of multiplication breaks down here. Now we've all been taught that that has to be what? Positive 15. We've been taught a negative times a negative is a positive. <clears throat> the question is why? In math, there are a lot of examples like this one here where the basic definition breaks down and it doesn't work. So what we do is we look for a pattern and we define the result to be whatever continues or fits that pattern. <clears throat> so if I had... Negative 5 times 3, we already said that is negative 15. Now, to create a pattern, I keep everything the same and I change one thing. So, I'm going to keep the negative 5 the same. I'm still multiplying. I'm going to change the 3 to a 2. What's negative 5 times 2? Negative 10. Now, as I keep continuing the pattern... I've got to keep everything the same except for that one thing, and i got to change it the same way. So the negative 5 stays the same, still multiplying. What would go next? Times 1. We went from 3 to 2, so now we got to go from 2 to 1. What's negative 5 times 1? Negative 5. So if we look for a pattern here, when we're starting with negative 5, if I reduce what we're multiplying by by 1, here I went from 3 down to 2, here I went from 2 down to 1, what does it do to our result? <clears throat> Plus 5. They went from negative 15 to negative 10, negative 10 to negative 5. Let's see if that pattern continues. So we still start with negative 5. Now it's going to be times 0. We reduce it by 1. Negative 5 times 0 is 0. Did that go up by 5 again? It sure did, didn't it? So now we continue assuming that that pattern is going to work. So 1 more would make this times a negative 1. What's negative 5 times negative 1 have to be? 5. We add, this has to go up by 5 again. Negative 5 times negative 2 would have to be 10. That would have to go up by 5 again. Negative 5 times negative 3 would have to be 15. So the reason that when we multiply two negatives, that we, we've defined that to be a positive, is because that continues this pattern. So if I multiply just some quick examples, 7 times negative 3, what do I get? Negative 21. Negative 8 times negative 4, what do I get? Positive 32. Negative 9 times 5, what do I get? Negative 45. Very good. Division is just the reverse of that multiplication. We, do, we talked about division a little bit as being repeated subtraction. But along with it, we, we think it was a reverse of multiplication, basically. So if we, we look at multiple, if we look at division, I should say, 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Because I can reverse this going the other way with, with multiplication. So because 
4 times 3 equals 12. That division is defined to be the reverse of a multiplication problem. So if I have the problem 24 divided by 4 equals blank, what that's really asking me is what number times 4 equals 24? That's the definition of division. What number would go in here? 6. So 24 divided by 4 is 6. So let's throw in the negatives. If I have 32, let's go negative 32 divided by 8. What that's really asking me is what times 8 equals a negative 32? When we look at this, this is negative. To get a negative result when I multiply, I have to have one value positive and one negative, right? Well, the 8 is positive, which means this value has to be negative. Negative times a positive will give me the negative. What value goes in here? Negative 4. So negative 32 divided by 8 is a negative 4. <clears throat> we might have 48 divided by a negative 16. Again, that's asking what number times negative 16 equals 48. The 48 is positive. To get a positive result, I must multiply two positive numbers or two negatives. This is negative, so that tells us this has to be negative. And what value? Negative 3, right? Negative 3 times negative 16 is a positive 48. So we see here... When we divide a positive by a negative, we get a negative. We divide a negative by a positive, we get a negative. If I have a negative 24 divided by a negative 3, well, again, that's asking us what times a negative 3 equals negative 24? What has to go in that blank? It's a positive 8. The 24 is negative, so it's a positive times a negative makes a negative. So we see that when we do a negative divided by a negative, we get a positive result. So it's that same pattern that we saw for multiplication. Well, we're going to see that coming into play in a few minutes when we look at operations with algebraic numbers, but there's one other background piece that we need to do that, and that is dealing with our exponents. We've already seen the basic exponent and having the two parts. The base, which is the x, and the power, which is the 3 in this case. If we have two exponents with the same base, we can combine them. We have x to the third times x to the fourth. x to the third, of course, means three x's multiplied together. x to the fourth means four x's multiplied together. If we multiply them all together, they're all being multiplied together now. How many x's do we have there? 7. So that's x to the 7th. Anybody know the shortcut when we're multiplying two exponents? You add the powers. Very good. If I'm multiplying two exponents with the same base, it's x to the power of a 
and also x again to the power of b, I add those powers. <clears throat> y to the 19th times y to the 7th is going to give me y to the 26th. Very good. What if I have two variables in there? Gonna, let me back off on that. That's not the way I want to do that. What if I have two variables involved in my calculation? I can do each variable separately. So I separate the x's, x to the third and x to the fifth. X to the third times X to the fifth will be X to the eighth. Then we'll have Y to the eleventh. Why are we able to separate those? Well, remember, we talked about commutative property and associative property yesterday. These are all technically being multiplied together, so we can change their orders. We can move this so the X's are together. And the y's are together so that we can combine the x's and then combine the y's. That only works. Commutative and associative only work if it's all multiplication. Or the other way around, if it's all addition, it would work as well. Something like this works exactly the same way. Just like any other fraction, we combine the numerators. What's x to the fifth times x to the fourth? x to the nine. And we combine the denominators. y to the third times y to the eighth? y to the eleventh. Good. <clears throat> Let's divide. x to the fifth divided by x to the third. Well, we think about this, just like reducing any fraction, and division and fractions are interchangeable. x to the fifth is five x's. x to the third is three x's multiplied together. When we reduce fractions, we talked about how you're just canceling out factors. Cancel out an x. Cancel out another x. Cancel out another x. And we're left with x squared or x to the second. Anybody know the shortcut for combining those when we divide? Subtract the powers. Perfect. If we have two exponents with the same base, they're both a base of x, and we're dividing those exponents. We subtract the powers. So x to the a divided by x to the b is x to the a minus b. So if x to the fifth divided by x to the eighth, I get x to the negative three. Good. Five minus three is negative three. Or five minus eight is negative three. x to the negative 7th divided by x to the 4 is going to give us yeah, negative. Go ahead. Negative 11. Good. Negative 7 minus 4, that's negative 7 plus a negative 4. That's negative 11. Or the one where I usually stump people y to the negative fifth divided by y to the negative twelfth. Okay. 
I got negative 5 minus a negative 12. That's negative 5 plus 12. Negative 5, positive 12, that is a positive 7. Y to the 7. Multiple variables, again, we can separate them out and do each separate. So x to the fifth, y to the eighth, divided by x to the fourth, y to the fourth. We can do the x's. What's x to the fifth divided by x to the fourth? Yeah, five minus four is one, so x to the one or just x. y to the eighth divided by y to the fourth? Y to the fourth. Good. Eight minus four is four. So y to the fourth. X to the third to the fourth power. That means we're taking X to the third and we're multiplying it by itself four times. Each x to the third, of course, is three x's being multiplied together. And if we're multiplying those all together, how many x's do we have there? Twelve, so that's x to the twelfth. Anybody know the shortcut for doing a power of a power? Multiply them, good. An exponent to another power, we just multiply the powers. So if I have y to the ninth to the power of 3, that becomes y to the 27. Or if I have x to the negative 5 to the power of 6, that becomes perfect, x to the negative 30. <clears throat> Just like with our multiplication and our division, we can separate if there's more than one variable. We'll do x to the fifth first. So the power of three becomes x to the 15th, good. y to the seventh to the power of three? y to the 21st. Even if it's in a fraction like this, a division, we can do each of them separately again. X to the eighth to the fifth power is X to the fortieth, good. Y squared to the fifth power? Y to the tenth. Can I combine that any further? No, those are different bases. This is X and this is Y. We can't combine that any further. You can only combine them if they have the same bases. X to the fifth divided by X to the eighth, we said was X to the... Negative 3. But if we wrote that out with 5x's multiplied out on top, and 8x's multiplied out on bottom, and we canceled our x's, what we end up with is 1 over x to the third. There is definitely a connection between those. X to the negative three and X to the, or sorry, X to the negative three and one over X to the third mean the same thing. <clears throat> Again, it comes back to that pattern. X to the third, um, if I divide that by X, 
What's it do to the power? Think of that as x to the 1. It makes that x to the 2, right? I take the x to the 2 and I divide that by x. What does it do to the power? 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's just x. If I keep going, x divided by x is 1. Anything divided by itself is 1, isn't it? But that's actually x to the power of 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. x to the power of 0 equals 1. In fact, anything to the power of 0 equals 1. A word of warning, when it comes to this math stuff, I'm a little bit twisted. I have been known in the past to give questions on a test that might look something like this. What's the answer to that? One. Why is it one? The whole thing is to the power of zero. Yes. Anything to the power of zero equals one. Yeah, there's a reason I'm very careful in the parking lot after school. So, as we keep going with this, we've got that x to the zero, or one, divided by x. Well, that's just 1 divided by x, or 1 over x. That's equivalent to x to the negative 1. You can see as we keep going, 1 over x divided by another x, that's 1 over x squared. Or x to the negative 1 subtract another 1 is x to the negative 2. The negative powers are reciprocals of the positive powers x to the negative 7 is the same as 1 over x to the 7th. One thing that will pop up in my math lab is to express things with positive powers. We might have x to the 5th, y to the negative 3rd, z squared. If I wanted to express that all with positive powers, the x to the 5th isn't going to change y to the negative 3 is going to have to be 1 over y to the positive 3. z squared doesn't have to change. Well, I'm going to think of those, since the 1 over y to the 3rd is a fraction, I'll make the others into fractions. That's just x to the 5th, z squared, over y to the 3rd. We might have x to the negative 8, y, z. I want to express that all in positive exponents. What would it look like? Perfect. Times y times z. And, of course, that just comes out to be y times z over x to the 8th. My math lab typically asks for all your results to have positive powers, positive exponents. So if you have something like x to the fifth, y to the eighth, z to the third, divided by x to the fourth, y to the fifth, z to the sixth. x to the fifth divided by x to the 4th, 5 minus 4 is just 1, so it's x to the 1 or just x, right? y to the 8th divided by y to the 5th is y to the 3rd. z to the 3rd divided by z to the 6th is Z minus, there you go, 3 minus 6 is negative 3. So to express that with positive powers, 
Well, the X and Y are already positive, so I'm going to leave the X and the Y to the third on top. Z negative 3 has to go on bottom, becomes Z to the third. What if it looks like this? And I want to express that all in positive powers. The first thing I would do is I would identify which ones are not positive, right? The y to the negative 4 and m to the negative 5 are the ones that are negative. The other ones are going to stay exactly where they are. The x to the 8, the z to the 2nd, and the p to the 3rd are going to stay exactly where they are. They don't need to move. They're already positive powers. So I'm going to leave them where they're at. That y to the negative fourth, though, how do I make that positive? One over y to the fourth. In other words, I put it on the bottom. The m to the negative fifth is a little bit trickier to deal with. To make that positive, I move it to the top. Why do I move it to the top? Well, that m to the fifth on bottom is basically 1 over 1 over m to the fifth. So that's saying 1 divided by 1 over m to the fifth. When we divide a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So that's just 1 times n to the fifth, which is m to the fifth. So 1 over m to the negative 5 is just m to the fifth. So that m to the negative 5 on bottom just becomes m to the fifth on the top. Now the shortcut, if it's a negative power, if it's in the numerator, you move it to the denominator to make it positive, like we did with the y. If it's in the denominator and it's a negative power, you move it to the numerator to make it positive, like we did with the m. Technically, we're not quite done here. Now on a test, if you had left your answer like this, I am just fine with that. But technically, math grammar says we should put the variables in alphabetical order. So the M should come first. I'm not that picky, but my math lab might give you a hard time about it. If it were a quiz and my math lab marked that wrong, let me know and I'll go back in and give you back the So we need to talk a little bit more about these algebraic numbers. If I have, so we talked about place values, about how 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 is just an algebraic number. The place values, instead of being 1s, 10s, and 100s, which we saw are, you know, 1s, 10s, and 10 squareds, the place values are just 1s, x's, and x squareds. The behavior of this is exactly like the behavior of any other number. Differences we saw, of course, is we can have more than 9 in a place value. We don't have to, there's no carrying. And... We saw that each digit can be positive or negative on its own, unlike an integer where every digit's positive or every, every digit is negative. <clears throat> when we go to combine these algebraic numbers, or often referred to as polynomials, 
we can set it up just like we would with whole numbers. So I write the first one out, then I line up the second one. The x squareds line up with the other x squareds. The x's line up with the other x's. And the ones line up with the other ones. Remember that we are subtracting here. <clears throat> 2 minus a negative 13. Yeah, that becomes 2 plus 13 or a positive 15. Negative 7x minus 9x. You got it. Negative 7 minus 9 is negative 7 plus a negative 9 or negative 16x. 5x squared minus 7x squared minus 2x squared. And that's it. Now, those of you that have had algebra, most of you have, probably learned a shortcut. You know, we saw that yesterday when we're adding, you just remove the parentheses and combine what they call as like terms. The shortcut is, we saw I change that to plus, then you change every sign in here. This becomes a negative, a negative, and a positive. And then you combine like terms. 5 and negative 7 was the negative 2x squared. Negative 7 and negative 9 is the negative 16. 2 and 13 is the positive 15. It gives us the same result. I just wanted you to see this so you see where that shortcut comes from. We changed every sign here. Well, technically, when we're doing the subtractions, we're changing these signs as we go, but we can do it all at once. I'm going to have you try one in your notes just because the subtraction of these can be a little tricky. I'm going to have you try to do this one. Two x squared plus seventeen x minus eleven minus seven x squared minus nine x plus twelve. I'll give you a minute to work on that and then we'll go over it. So this is subtraction, so we're going to subtract in each place value. Negative 11, oops, what happened here? <clears throat> so negative 11 minus 12 is... Negative 23, right? 17x minus, nine, minus a negative 9x. So that's 17 minus a negative 9 becomes 17 plus 9, which is 26. A positive 26x. 2x squared minus 7x squared. Negative 5x squared. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions on that example? Okay. Multiplication. We start out with single digit numbers as we saw back last Wednesday. 
<clears throat> we multiply counts. What's three times seven? 21. As we saw earlier today, when we have multiple names, we can do each name separately. X to the fifth times X to the fourth is <clears throat> X to the ninth. Good. Y squared times Y to the fourth. Careful. Six. There we go. Four plus two is six. <clears throat> Our next step up in difficulty. We'll be looking at a single digit number times a multiple digit number. When we're looking at this, this is just a multiplication, um, just like any whole number multiplication. I usually take the, the number with the most digits and I put it on top. So 7x squared minus 11x. And I'm going to multiply it by the other one, 5x to the third. Then I would multiply just like whole numbers. This is 5x to the third times negative 11x. 5 times negative 11 is negative 55. x to the third times x. x to the fourth. Good. We think of that as x to the one. 3 plus 1 is 4. So x to the fourth. And then x to the third times 7x squared. 5x to the third times 7x squared. 5 times 7 is 35, and x to the third times x squared is x to the fifth. That's the actual process of multiplying these numbers. We were all taught a shortcut called distributing. And all that does is shortens up this process. It looks like this. There's 5x to the third times 7x squared is still... 35x to the fifth. We got to be a little careful here. This is 5x to the third times a negative 11x, which is negative 50. Perfect. Negative 55x to the fourth. <clears throat> Looking familiar yet? Okay. The next step is to have two multiple digit numbers multiplied together. We have 3x minus 2 times 4x plus 5. <clears throat> now, again, this is no different than multiplying any whole numbers. I could write it out like this and do what's 5 times negative 2? Negative 10. 5 times 3x? 15x. Move to the next digit here. You gotta leave a blank or a zero here, plus zero here. Four X times negative two. Negative eight X. And four X times three X. Twelve X squared. And now we combine, we've got the negative 10 and zero is just negative 10. 15 X and negative eight X. Positive 7x, and then we get the 12x squared. <clears throat> that, again, is the long or full process of multiplying out those two algebraic numbers, or two polynomials. We were taught a shortcut called FOIL. F stands for first. First two digits are multiplied, 3x times 4x. 12x squared O stands for outside or outer. 3x times 5 is 15x. I stands for inside or inner. Negative 2 times 4x. Negative 8x. Now, they usually tell us to do this, to write it like that. I usually do this. I drop it down here. Since the 15x and negative 8x are the same, I'm going to put it that way so I can combine them easier. And then L stands for 
last. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. So I've got the negative 10, 15x, and negative 8x is still positive 7x and 12x squared. The last operation, unfortunately, is the most complicated. Division. So if we take 48, x to the 8th, y to the 4th, z to the 5th, divided by 16, x to the 5th, y to the 5th, z to the 5th. Just like any other number, we do the counts first. We divide the counts. 48 divided by 16. 3, good. Then we take each name separately. x to the 8th divided by x to the 5th. We subtract powers. Good. X to the third. 8 minus 5 is 3. Y to the fourth divided by Y to the fifth. Perfect. Y to the negative 1. Z to the fifth divided by Z to the fifth. Z to the 0. They just do exactly. They cancel out. Z to the 0. 5 minus 5 is 0. And anything to the power of 0 is 1. So multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. My math lab's not going to want us to leave it like this. It's going to want us to do this. 3x to the third. To change that y to the negative 1 to a positive power, we move it to the bottom. So it becomes y to the positive 1 or just y on the bottom like that. Something like this. I'm dividing. One thing that we don't often see when we divide whole numbers let's get back here, is something that looks like this. When we divide that, 2 goes into 4 how many times? Twice. 2 goes into 8. 4 and 2 goes into 6, 3. Yeah, we just divided each digit separately. Since they divided out evenly, we didn't have to do much. Same type of thing applies here. 60x to the 5th divided by 12x to the 4th. 60 divided by 12, 5. x to the 5th divided by x to the 4th. Just x. 5 minus 4 is 1, so x to the 1 or just x. The next digit, negative 36x to the third divided by 12x to the fourth. Negative 36 divided by 12. Negative 3. x to the third divided by x to the fourth. x to the negative 1. Good. Our next digit, 24x divided by 12x to the fourth. What's 24 divided by 12? 2. Perfect. x divided by x to the fourth is x to the negative 3. Now we're not going to leave it like that. The 5x will be okay with. Minus 3, but instead of x to the negative 1, it'll be 3 over x. Plus 2, instead of x to the negative 3, it's going to be x to the third on bottom like that. So that would be our final form of our answer. Any questions there? I realize I've, I've rushed a little bit on these last couple examples because we're running short of time. I wanted to make sure we left enough time to see this last process. We'll go over it more on Monday if we need to.
Something like this. Something disappeared here. Didn't they have that as 3x? Minus 5? Okay. Was it 2? Okay. 2x minus 5? Okay. So it's 2x minus 5. So we got 6x squared minus 19x plus 40 divided by 2x minus 5. Just like when we did our, our whole number divisions, we start with the first digit and we work our way to the right. We go backwards, basically. And in our divisor here, we're only concerned about our first digit as well. What is 6x squared divided by 2x? It's 3x. Very good. So up here, we're going to put in 3x. Then we're going to multiply that back out. What's 3x times 2x? 6x squared. 3x times negative 5? Negative 15x. Now we are subtracting that. So 6x squared minus 6x squared is going to cancel out. Here's where we've got to be careful with our negatives. This is 19x minus a negative 15x. So negative 19 minus a negative 15. That's negative 19 plus 15, which is negative 4x. Then we'll bring down the positive 40. Now again, we only look at that first digit. What's negative 4x divided by 2x? Negative 2. And we multiply it back out. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. And we are subtracting. Negative 4x minus negative 4x. That cancels out. What is 40 minus 10? 30. Now, there's nothing left to bring down, so we're done here. So this is a remainder of 30. The way we would write that would be like this, plus 30 over, what's our divisor? 2x minus 5. This is a process we will go over more later. Don't worry. Um, this is a tough process. It's going to take a couple times to get it down. Hopefully, most of this today was still review for many of you. Um, Monday, it'll still be a little bit of review before we start moving into to some of the more, um, more complex concepts. Homework. Homework 1C is assigned. It's, it's listed as being due on Friday, January 25th. Again, that's a soft deadline. It's just to help you organize so that you save time. Um, the hard deadline is January 28th because now starting today, quiz one will be open. Quiz one is due on January 28th at 11.59 p.m. So all of the homework assignments for week one, 1A, 1B, and 1C, need to be done at that time as well. The reason they're set up that way is so if there are questions, there is still time on Monday to ask me questions before you do the quiz. Remember those quizzes, you will get two attempts. So if you get done with all the homework and you try the quiz sometime this week or over the weekend, if you do well on it, you can go back and you can see what you did. If you, if you made mistakes, but you understand what those are, you can retake it. If you made mistakes and you're not sure about them, you will have time on Monday to ask me questions before you retake the quiz again. You have till basically midnight Monday night to, to do your second attempt if you need. Any questions? Okay, I do promise the pace of the course does slow down once we get past all this review. Um, a lot of review stuff that we jam into this first couple of weeks. You guys have a great day, actually a great weekend, and we'll see you all on Monday.